Hi, everybody. It's Alan Fine, and I'm here with Heather Heverling, who is the new president of Adventure Woman, which has been putting together uh, adventure travel tours for active women for years. Now, guys, don't tune out because we're going to learn all about that and more on Insider Travel Report. Heather, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Tell us about Adventure Woman. Uh, how, give us a little history. It's been around since 82. That's correct. Yes, it, our 40th anniversary actually is coming up um, in 2022, which is right around the corner for those of us who are planning travel, as I'm sure everyone here, all of the viewers know. Um, we started, we're started by a travel pioneer, um, Susan Eckert who um, during her postgraduate years in college found herself, she was planning a lot of trips for herself and her college or postgraduate schoolmates. And after doing that over and over again, coupled with her, pa her own passion for travel, um, she said, you know, maybe I should go into business doing this. And so she launched this business back in 1982 with a real focus on relationship building with women to women, um, both with it for the travelers themselves, but also relationships with the travelers and women in the countries where they were visiting. Um, so we've really grown on that premise over the years. Um, a few years back, Susan sold the company to Judy Wineland and her two daughters um, and I'm I was sure going to ask you about the connection with Wineland Thomas Adventures. Yes. So I'm sure many of the viewers here have heard of Judy Wineland before. She's another um, trailblazer, I would say, in the travel space. She started um, overseas adventure travel on her own back in the day um, and then sold that off and then started some additional companies. Wineland Thompson, you mentioned, um, along with her husband, Rick. And so she has a true entrepreneurial spirit, as well as clearly a love and passion for travel that she's passed on to her two daughters over the years. Um, and so the three of them bought the company from Susan back in 2016. Um, and just in that short time now, over the last four years, they've actually grown the business um, quite a bit just by, you know, taking some of Judy's tremendous experience and applying that to this business as well. But talking about expertise, you have quite a bit yourself, uh, National Geographic, Grand Circle Travel, Overseas Adventure Travel. Paint us a direct line from, from then to now for you. Sure. Well, I, um, yeah, I have a little bit of a funny story, I guess. I never traveled at all when I was a kid. My first time on an airplane at all was to fly to London um, with one of my high school friends. Um, and I stayed there for a month. But prior to that, I had really never left New England, which is where I'm originally from. So um, and what part is that? I grew up in Connecticut, went to college in Maine, and then after college moved to Boston, where I was for many years before. Now I'm in DC, um, where I relocated to work at National Geographic a few years ago. So I really, um, I happened, I just sort of tumbled into travel after college because I needed a job <laughs> and I ended up temping at a tour operator in Boston. And I'm sure many people can relate to this. Like once you get into travel, it's like in your blood forever. You right, can't right. get out. You and get I've the had bug. So, yeah, you get the bug. And so many people this year have said to me, you know, are you going to change industries now with everything that's happened with the pandemic and how much it's really, you know, decimated our industry? And I cannot imagine doing anything else. I love this. Um, this is it for me. So um, I ended up over my career working at different tour operators, both in Boston and then here at National Geographic in D.C., and I'd say the one common thread for all of them is this real focus on off the beaten path, authentic experiences with the people. Um, I know for me, whenever I come back from a trip overseas, yes, I'll remember the buildings and the history, but what I really take back with me in my heart is the people. 
And so Adventure Women really fits right in line with that sort of history that I have of companies that are really about exploration um, and really engaging with the local people. Now, this is a newly created role of president. Adventure Woman's been around, as we said, since 82. Why now? Why is now the right time for a president and you yourself being that president? I think, you know, obviously this year, if it has taught us anything is that, you know, things can change at the drop of a hat. And this industry has always been changing anyway, but certainly with this year, we've, we've all been forced to take a step back and pause and really reevaluate what are we doing in this space? Um, what are we about? What's our mission? And how are we going to move forward from this? And so I think the timing, you know, it's unfortunate that, you know, this year and ev everything that's happened has been, you know, extremely difficult for everyone. But I think for us in the travel industry, you know, any crisis breeds opportunity um, to reevaluate and reposition for the future. Um, well, let's talk so about that. So how did uh, Adventure Woman, how has it repositioned itself? How has it been handling the pandemic? Uh, layoffs, cancellation, future credits, rebooking. Paint a picture of what it's been like for Adventure Woman. A big focus for the team this year, yes, was we had to get really lean and mean. Um, and a lot of, in, just in terms of our trips, we did have to cancel, you know, the vast majority of our trips this year, like, you know, pretty much everyone else in the industry has seen. We were able to, to operate some trips. We, you know, we did, of course, have trips that ran at the, you know, January, February, March, but we, we still were able to get some trips off the ground in Q2, Q3, and Q4 of this year with the pivot of really focusing on more outdoor active um, trips, which we have a, a suite of programs where we have more traditional cultural um, programs all the way up to extremely physically challenging trips like Everest Base Camp. Give um, us an example of a, of a Q2, Q3, Q4 trip that was able to go forward. Yeah, so we operated we, a, a brand new program for us actually, which was a Utah rafting trip that um, Judy, our owner, led the program. So she went out there with, you know, 12 other, I would say, really intrepid travelers. They oh, all had great. their own tent, you know, no cell phone service. They were really oh, off the grid. And and, and away all, from and, and off the COVID grid. I mean, you were off. The, they were off all the grids <laughs> and they really loved it. I mean, there it's the true spirit of adventure and they wanted to get out there and they had such a great time. They were on the rapids all together for the week. And, you know, they all came back and were so appreciative. And we, we got such positive feedback after that trip because they felt safe. You know, they had a great time and they, they all made some new relationships for the future. So it was really positive. Now, on the trips that were canceled, um, for future credits were given? Are they rebooking? How does it look for the future? Yeah, so we um, we were able to keep everyone's um, deposits for future travel. We still have um, we still have a number of people that are waiting for 2021. They know they want to travel, and they're just kind of trying to sense out the timing of when they feel safe. And I think now with the vaccine, you know, it's promising news for all of us that the vaccine's out there, you know, it gives us hope that we can get out on the road again. But I do think now, at least for our travelers, people would like to wait until they're vaccinated to, to start traveling again. So we have some people that are set aside. They know they want to go. They just don't know when or where yet. Um, but we are operating trips in 2021. We have our first um, 2021 group departures in January um, going to Yellowstone. Very good. Tell us about who your target is. What's your target guest? Sure. We, I mean, so our trips are really specially designed by women for women. Um, and we're just looking for people that want to get out there, really experience the world, explore and, and push themselves outside of their comfort zone, whether that's, you know, physically, like I mentioned, you know, trekking or, or doing some like 
intense climbing or even just, you know, trying local food at a, a you know, a local market in Thailand. Um, we recently added mother daughter trips to our portfolio within the last year. So now we're kind of bringing in the younger generation as well. Um, cause we know the travel bug can strike at any time. So we're trying to get that generational group in there as well. But typically we, you know, we're just, it's intrepid female travelers. And I assume that, um, um, like there's some resorts that have the adult section, the kid section, there, there is no male section here. There's no send them off to play. <laughs> there's no banishing of men. No, um, no, I think, you know, as a woman, I can say we do travel differently um, than men. And I think it's a much different dynamic when you're in a group of all female travelers um, versus even if it's a small group of mixed the dynamics different, the interactions are different. And again, I think our, because our, one of our key areas of focus is this building of relationships. Um, it, it's really, it comes across and plays really well um, with a group of women. What, what type of travel is coming back? It sounds like it's the, the domestic, uh, uh, like you said, the national parks, things like that. Can you give us an overview? Yeah, the bulk of the trips that we ran in the second half of 2020 and what we have, you know, slated to operate in the first couple of months of 2021, yes, our domestic trips in the U.S., Baja as well. Um, and just similar to what I mentioned earlier, more of an outdoor active focus. So rafting, hiking, um, the Baja trip is whale watching. Um, so you're outdoors a lot. Um, most of those trips actually have just single accommodations. So people either have their own tent or their own room. They're, they're not sharing with a roommate. So again, I think that helps them feel more comfortable and safe. Um, as we get into March, though, we are starting to, to operate some international trips again. Um, so for example, we have a Galapagos departure in March that's almost sold out. Um, so there are, and we did call travelers and say, you know, how do you feel? Do you want to go? And they all, they want to go. They're out there. They're ready. They've already booked their flights. Right. Um, so, yeah, so there is a group of people that they just want to get back out on the road again. And I think they feel safe doing it with us. Well, I heard that some of the changes are, you know, the single tents. Um, what other changes were made to accommodate the pandemic? Well, we, um, so single tents or rooms for sure. Um, we, in some cases, um, have as a result of that, of limiting the number of rooms, we have smaller groups that are going. Um, so again, I think it's, it, it helps them feel more comfortable. Um, again, more of outdoor travel as opposed to, you know, sort of the typical cultural tours where you're spending a lot of time and everybody's wearing masks? Um, masks. Um, and we, as of now, have not made the decision to require um, negative COVID yes. tests prior to departure for everyone. If, if a country has that as part of their entry requirements, absolutely. So we're adhering to all of the, the different requirements for all the different countries. Well, what about um, the states? Some states have different requirements. That must make yep. it difficult. So again, we're really just trying, we're following everything to the letter of the law in terms of regulations and guidelines by state and by country. Um, and, and we've introduced um, what we are calling our book with confidence policy. So we rolled that out at the end of the summer, early fall that, you know, we, we recognize that it's still uncertain and people don't really know what's on the horizon and how things might change again overnight. So um, we rolled out this policy that, you know, people could book and if they needed to cancel for any reason prior to departure, uh, you know, we, we would normally that the deposits non-refundable, but we would roll their deposit over, um, to a future adventure women trip. And if we needed to cancel the trip because of COVID, we would give them, um, a hundred dollar credit towards a future travel with us as well. And that's really helped. I think people know that, um, you know, they feel okay making the reservation because they know it's, they're going to get their money, you know, they're going to be able to apply that money to a future trip. Um, and they all want to travel. 
All right. So how do travel advisors work with you? Do you have programs for them? Um, is there places they should go? Give us a lowdown on that, please. Yeah. So we definitely welcome um, travel advisors. Uh, you know, again, having worked in the industry for so long, I know how valuable they can be in terms of educating and really steering travelers to the right company and the right trip for them. But they um, also need to be educated about you. So how can they do that? Yes. So that's actually, I would say, one of the biggest strengths that I think that we have because our background is really focused on the individual relationship with each of our travelers. Our um, salespeople, they're used to spending time on the phone and really getting down into the nitty gritty of answering any and all kinds of questions. And in terms of qualifying the right client for the right trip, because again, we have that sort of spectrum of physical activity and whatnot. Um, our sales team is really well equipped to work with the travel advisor to help them get their client on the best trip for them. And how can they uh, get in touch? So, yes. So you can see all of our trips at www.adventurewomen.com. Um, there's a lot of information there around physical requirements, um, inclusions, except, you know, all the standard things that you'll need to help get your clients informed. Um, and then there's an 800 number right at the top of the website. And, you know, if you call our, our salespeople, we'll definitely walk through and spend as much time as necessary answering any specific questions that you might have. That's great. So, and to sum it all up, what would you want? We've got almost 75,000 travel advisors now. Uh, what would you want them to know about Adventure World? I think the biggest thing, and I, it's probably been a consistent theme throughout this conversation, is Adventure Women is so much more than just an adventure travel company. We are really focused on people and the women who travel with us and the women in the destinations where we travel. So we're not just a travel company, we're a relationship company. So we wanna give everyone a chance to, to have some adventure and have fun, but also really to feel empowered and to build friendships and relationships with other women while they're on these trips. And it sounds like that relationship extends backwards up to the travel advisor and the sales department. So it sounds like it's, it's all there. It really does. And I, one thing that I find very funny is when I first started, Judy, who's one of the owners, was kind of showing me around the sales database and she clicked on a customer profile and said, oh, Susan, I went with her to Antarctica. And then she clicked on another one and said, oh, Kathy, I remember her 10 years ago. She went to Botswana. So the owner of the company, it goes all the way up to the top. Um, it's a very personal relationship. And, you know, we take a lot of pride in, you know, making sure that these people um, get the best experience possible. It's like an extension of our family, really. You couldn't have sold it any better than that. <laughs> Thank you so much for speaking with us. Excellent. Thank you so much for having me. And this is Alan Fine for Insider Travel Report. <laughs>